Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, January 10th, 2021. I'm your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin and order of worship for today's service, which can be found in the link below this video on Facebook and on YouTube, or you can head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com. Look for the publications link at the top of the webpage. Uh, scroll down until you see today's date. There, you can click on that uh, date and you will download the PDF for today's service. Uh, you can look at it on a tablet or feel free to print it out. Once you've uh, gone ahead and uh, printed the bulletin out, um, you can turn your attention to the announcements found on the back of that bulletin. The session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Keep in contact with us via social media, username Central Prez PB, or at our website for announcements about any special services and when we plan to resume in-person worship. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are also on our website. Now let us turn our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. The God of heaven has made his home on earth. Christ dwells among us and is one with us. Highest in all creation, he lives among the least. He journeys with the rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and drink the water of life. Come now, all who hunger, and be filled with good things. Come now, all who seek, and be warmed by the fire of love. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Now please join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin, first in unison and then silently. Merciful God, in baptism you promise forgiveness and a new life making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from sisters and brothers in Christ. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us hostage. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Remind us that the promises you make in baptism so that we may, ri may rise to new life and live together in grace. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now let's turn it over to Reverend Tim Rees for this week's sermon. Are you sure this is where he fell in? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the first chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 5. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning the first day. Our second reading comes from the first chapter of the gospel according to Mark, beginning with the fourth verse and proceeding through verse 11. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, 
with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he <clears throat> will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth, as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, Mark's gospel tells us. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That's why people from all over Judea and Jerusalem flocked to John to confess their sins and acknowledge the many and varied ways they had broken covenant with God and neighbor. To own up to their sins of commission and omission in which they had neither loved God with their whole being nor loved their neighbor as themselves. This was why John had been sent to be the prophetic voice, calling the people to repentance and preparing the way for the coming of God. Even his manner of dress and his diet would have been strong reminders to the people of Israel of the great prophet Elijah, who not only exposed and confronted unrighteousness and injustice and idolatry, but pointed to the reign of God with a fervor that was unparalleled. Not surprisingly, therefore, John not only proclaimed a, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, but also he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so far, so good. But then comes something rather scandalous. Did you catch it? Mark goes on to say, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Wait just a minute. Why in the world would Jesus, the incarnate word of God, who uttered at the dawn of creation, let there be light, and there was light, and it was good, ever need to submit to one who has confessed to be utterly unworthy to untie his sandals? Why would Jesus, the one perfect person ever to walk the earth, the Lamb of God without any blemish, ever need to submit to a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Early Christians struggled with this dilemma. For some would-be believers, it was nearly as much of a stumbling block as was Jesus's crucifixion. So there's little wonder that in Matthew's gospel, John tells us or John offers up a protest saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? And in Luke's gospel, though it reports that Jesus had been baptized, he never actually asserts that Jesus was baptized by John. And in John's gospel, 
there's not even a report that Jesus was baptized. Instead, John the Baptist merely says, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. For many today, it remains a scandal and an embarrassment that Jesus was baptized, that he was immersed in the, wa in the very waters that were literally made filthy by those that stirred up the silt on the river bottom and metaphorically made filthy by the sins that this water was purported to wash away. It's as if there is this need on our behalf to defend our Lord, to protect his holiness, to preserve his purity, and in every other way to shield our Lord from the stain of sin. And I must confess that I was guilty of that on Wednesday and Thursday. Like many of you, I watched with disgust and horror as violence and mayhem erupted at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And as I watched, a number of thoughts ran through my mind. I was struck by the fact that the police response was far different in the midst of this violence than it was during a peaceful protest where authorities cleared the area this summer so the president could pose in front of a church with his Bible. I lamented the blatant falsehoods peddled by many claiming widespread fraud in the election. I wondered what other nations, both friend and foe, were thinking as the events unfolded. And then I saw an image that chilled me to my soul. One of the participants who raided the Capitol was waving a huge flag with the name Jesus emblazoned on it. I spent a restless and mostly sleepless night on Wednesday haunted by that angry man defiantly waving a flag with our Savior's name on it. I found myself questioning the twisted logic that anyone would believe that the Prince of Peace could in any way condone or bless such violence. I wanted to purge that image from my mind, but I couldn't. And I spent a restless and mostly sleepless night on Thursday, again haunted by that angry man defiantly waving a flag with our Savior's name on it. But that night, it was God who was doing the questioning of me. Why wouldn't God's beloved Son be found in the midst of sin? Not to condone it, but certainly to forgive it. I was then reminded of that old joke about a drunk who stumbled along a baptismal service being held one Sunday morning by a river. And he walked down into the water and stood next to the minister. And the minister turned and noticed him and said, are you ready to find Jesus? The drunk looked back at the minister and replied, yes, preacher, I sure am. So the minister plunged the drunk under the water and pulled him right back up and said, have you found Jesus? No, I haven't, replied the drunk. So the minister plunged the drunk under the water for a quite a bit longer, pulled him up a second time and said, now, brother, have you found Jesus? And again, the reply came, no, I haven't, preacher. Exasperated, the minister plunged the drunk under the water and held him there until the drunk began to thrash around in fear that he might drown. And when he finally pulled him up and asked the man for the third time, friend, are you sure you haven't found Jesus? The man wiped his eyes and spluttered, preacher, are you sure this is where he fell in? For many Christians, salvation has become something we have to move toward instead of acknowledging the truth that Jesus, the good shepherd, comes and finds us. We do not celebrate a Jesus who says, come and find me, but a Savior whom God sent to reconcile the world to himself. We need not look for Jesus because we know exactly where he can be found, right in the middle of a fallen and fallible humanity. 
Are you sure this is where he fell in? Yes. In Jesus Christ, we meet not only God with us, but also God for us. I know it seems like ages ago, but in actuality, it was just a few weeks ago when we opened the season of Advent with the words from the prophet Isaiah, who said, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. And last week, we wrapped up our celebration of the season of Christmas with the words from John's gospel, and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. We tend to judge others by the company they keep, so what does it say about a God who chooses to keep company with the likes of you and me? It seems utterly incomprehensible that God would or could love any of us that much, and yet God does. It boggles the mind to think that the Lord of all creation would not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. Then being found in human form would humble himself and become obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Sometimes that seems too good to be true, but it is true. God's love can and does reach into the very depths of our being, even when we know ourselves to be unworthy of such love. And in, even when we are incapable of giving such love, and even when we have spent a lifetime hearing, we will never be loved. Are you sure this is where he fell in? Is it really true that God is utterly unashamed to be identified as one of us? And reverberating through the corridors of eternity is God's answer. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Are you sure this is where he fell in? Here, in the midst of so much hatred and violence and pain. Are you sure this is where he fell in, in the presence of so little compassion and so little concern for anyone but ourselves? Are you sure this is where he fell in, among the littlest, the last, the lost, the least, and the left out? Are you sure this is where he fell in alongside sinners, demoniacs, and lepers? Are you sure this is where he fell in with the blind, the deaf, the lame, and even the dead? Are you sure this is where he fell, fell in re reaching out to both the oppressed and the oppressor, remaining faithful to those who are faithless? and to those whose faith fails them. And reverberating through the corridors of eternity is God's answer. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. For by stepping into the water, Jesus said by his actions that in the midst of our sinfulness and brokenness is exactly where he was meant to be. Not to bless it, not to condone it, but to forgive it. And he signified by his actions that there is no place God would rather be. Because as our readings tell us this morning, the one who swept over the face of the waters at the dawn of creation did in fact tear open the heavens, not in anger, not in dismay at what Jesus did in stepping into the river Jordan, but rather to voice God's favor and approval at what was taking place. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which again this week will be taken electronically. You can head to our website, www.centralprezpb.com, look for the Donate Now link at the top of the webpage, and make your tithes electronically. If you prefer, you can also mail a check or money order to the church. The address is 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him Lord to your honor and glory. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, which there are several. Um, we want to keep continue to keep Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers. Uh, he is uh, having a liver biopsy this coming Thursday. Um, we were made aware this week that Dr. Laura Festa, wife of former Pastor Dan Festa, has been moved to hospice care. Uh, we want to continue to uh, keep uh, Laura in our prayers. Um, she... Uh, she is dealing with Alzheimer's and, uh, and is having a very hard way of it. Uh, we want to continue to keep uh, Lori and Luis Sanchez in our prayers. Um, uh, his father passed away recently, and uh, we want to send Christian sympathies to the Sanchez family on, on their loss. Um, we also want to send our uh, condolences to the family of Butch uh, Mitherson. Um, Butch's wife works with Laura at Reliance Bank, and uh, Mr. Mitherson has been um, has been uh, very ill recently. Uh, we want to uh, hold their uh, family in prayer. Um, we also want to uh, continue to keep um, Jennifer Place and her family in our prayers. Um, Jennifer lost her father uh, recently, as everyone knows, um, and they are still um, learning to deal with uh, the loss of their patriarch and. Um, and they are they are, they need all the prayers that they can get. Um, we also want to mention <clears throat> um, the family of uh, Robert Crass, uh, who is um, related to uh, Miss Regler. Um, he passed away recently of COVID. Um, the rest of Mr. Crass's family also is uh, dealing with COVID and not doing very well. So please keep their family in your prayers. Uh, we also want to keep uh, Benjamin Neal in our prayers. Um, Benjamin attended uh, church with us very for 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 a long time, and Dana uh, continues to. Um, Dana, his mother, um, Benjamin uh, has also come down with COVID, so we want to continue to keep uh, prayer for Benjamin's healing. Uh, we also want to continue to keep um, Haley Chandler in our prayers. Um, she uh, had another round of chemo this week. Um, we want to continue to keep Haley. Uh, in her battle with cancer in our prayers as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, uh, um, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Uh, please continue to uh, provide healing to Brad Von Tunglin, um, Dr. Laura Festa, uh, Haley Chandler, Benjamin Neal, the family of Robert Crass, uh, please get, uh, please provide um, mercies to the, uh, Jennifer Place and her family and the family of Butch Mitherson, uh, Lori and Louise Sanchez is on the, uh, on the with the loss of the uh, of uh, Louise's father, and um, we should definitely continue to keep the nation in our prayers uh, with the events of this past week. 
um, it's it's been on the forefront of our minds that there's been plenty of um, plenty of, of turmoil in our country, and and we need to take a moment and a breath to uh, hear your will, and and take a moment in prayer and listen for for your will and do your will in this country and and indeed in this world. Uh, please continue to hold all of those who are who have lost uh, uh, family members to COVID. Uh, in your care. Uh, please uh, help the doctors and the nurses and all of those who are able to be vaccinated, uh, to be vaccinated uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, please uh, keep those who cannot be vaccinated at this time in your care and protection. Uh, please keep the families who have lost um, members to COVID in your caring as well. And um, please, uh, please heal our nation. Give us hope that as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.